abandoning desire the enemy along with gain itself so full of loss and the good deeds which are the cause of the other two practice indifference to everything chapter 10 verse 1 ashtavakra gita then she proceeds to ask dear acharya ji pranam ashtavakra suggests to practice indifference to everything also i remember scriptures say when there is conflict i mean indifferent and be indifferent to people who indulge in bad deeds will i be able to respond rightly if i am indifferent is practicing indifference the same as witnessing how do i practice indifference when i see evil within me and out in the world acharya ji would you please explain the concept of indifference ashtavakra is saying be indifferent to desire the enemy all the vices and in the same breath he says be indifferent to good deeds and you are asking whether that is the same as the stuff that you claim to have read in other scriptures stuff that says be indifferent to people who indulge in bad deeds no parmeshwari not at all the mind is conditioned to choose and choose not wrongly not merely wrongly but in the wrong domain you go out to buy apples and then you engage yourself in choosing the best orange not that you are not making a choice not that your choice is flawed it's just that the very domain of the choice the very scope of the choice is invalid what is it that you want an apple and what are you busy with oranges and you want to make the best choice amongst the oranges and using your intellect you may in fact succeed in choosing the best orange for yourself but that won't help
because the very fundamentals are wrong. You may feel puffed up on having chosen and obtained the best orange. But then oranges are not what you need. Now if you fail in choosing the best orange, chances are you will choose again. You will at least see that you are making a mistake. You may not know what exactly is the mistake you are making. But you at least know that some mistake is being made. So if you fail in choosing the best orange, at least there is a chance that you will try again. But if you succeed in choosing the best orange, then you are victorious. And this victory is the biggest defeat you can inflict upon yourself. This victory is your greatest curse. Man keeps choosing between good and bad, Parmeshwari. And you especially are quite conditioned to keep roaming in the world of right and wrong, correct, incorrect, good, bad, virtue, vice. Bhagavan, Shaitan. Man keeps wandering in this world and in this world there are always two poles. On the good pole sits Bhagavan. On the bad pole sits Shaitan. And man considers it a great achievement to have travelled to the right pole, the good pole. And obviously it's not easy to move to the pole of virtue. It takes a lot. And man keeps himself engaged there. Hmm? Those who live in goodness Look down upon those who live in vices and evil, immoral lives. Hmm. What one totally misses is that the choice was not to be made between good and bad. Good and bad are the part of the same duality. They can be called as good-bad. Good-bad are one. There indeed was a choice to be made, but the choice was to be made between good-bad and dharma. The choice was to be made between good-bad and dharma. So, I have a sore throat, Parmeshwari. So now here it is and this is something that I really need. Hmm? Here it is. Okay. And Parmeshwari, here are these two. Now out of these two, one is delicious, one is not. One is tasteful, the other has no taste. And all my life, I keep trying to choose between these two. 
and what is the parameter I am choosing on? The parameter I am choosing on is taste. And I may on this flawed parameter make a good choice. The parameter is taste and on the parameter of taste I choose juice over water and I say see I made the right choice because juice is tastier than the fact is the very parameter the criteria itself is flawed the criteria should have been temperature and not taste given my throat what should be the criteria temperature. temperature but I totally forgot that I forgot who I am I forgot to look at myself and therefore I forgot what I really need I did make a choice but the choice was between these two whereas the choice should have between these two these two are one on the criteria of temperature these two are one because they both are at the same temperature they both are a bit cold and this is different from them but instead of choosing between this and this instead of choosing between these two which are a pair and hence one and this which is not a part of that pair I started choosing between the two elements of the pair itself and I succeeded I chose juice it's a foregone conclusion what happens to my throat now and I am so involved with these two that I totally forget this and a lot of new work needs to be done here because even to make a choice here one needs to exercise intelligence, conduct tests, seek opinions and do a lot. So one thinks that he is gainfully employed. One thinks that he is investing himself in some productive project. So what am I doing these days? I am trying to figure out which one of these do I choose. It doesn't matter whether you choose this or you choose this you will end up with a very bad throat. Instead of choosing between these two, you should have come here. But the very fundamental is flawed. You do not know the criteria on which to choose. You just don't know. Choosing between these two Parmeshwari is called morality. And you have been confined for a long time between water and juice. Rejecting water and juice and choosing tea is called spirituality. Come have tea with me. With a sore throat, if you are busy choosing between water and juice this is called morality a choice is being made a decision is being made but that decision won't help on either side of the decision on either side of the divide you are equally defeated your victory lies here you have to reject both limbs of the duality. You have to reject both the choices that duality offers you. Morality does not do that. Morality keeps you confined to duality and says choose good over bad. Choose virtue over vice. Which is alright if taste is the criteria. But not alright if the welfare of the throat, which is the welfare of the self, is the criteria. Those who do not know themselves, they can choose on any criteria. But if you know yourself, you very well know that right now, you need not choose for taste. You need to choose for 
temperature are you getting it are you getting it so when ashtavakra says be indifferent to everything he is talking of things parmeshwari all the things are here juice is a thing water is a thing tea is not a thing that's the new sutra for you hmm write it down carefully juice is a thing water is a thing tea is not a thing so when you have to be indifferent to everything what is it that you can reject juice and water reject both of them for both of them are just things and if you can have a thing you can have another thing as the opposite of that thing of nothing there can be no opposite equally of everything there can be no opposite yes prashri hmm so when it is said reject everything that means reject the world of duality and select dharm in strong indifferent is a strong decision a strong choice in deep negation is great devotion and affirmation when you are deeply negating water and juice you are strongly affirming tea but tea is not a thing so the wise ones have preferred to not to talk of tea because only things can be talked of and tea is not a thing so they don't tell you what to go with what to choose they resist that they avoid telling you what to choose but they strongly tell you what to reject so they tell you as ashtavakra does reject 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 be indifferent but please see that when you are rejecting then you are selecting the pure consciousness the awareness that rejects aren't you selecting it after all who is rejecting there is somebody who is rejecting right and by rejecting strongly you are selecting the one who is rejecting and aren't you had you not had faith in the one who rejects could you have proceeded to decisively reject so only the one who has faith in the rejecting entity can reject with composure and totality others will reject in a very lukewarm way their rejection will be 50 50 for 3 months there was rejection now there is selection again are you getting it hmm? and remember that unless you have a strong devotion to the rejecting awareness and why does the pure consciousness or awareness reject because it can select only itself it is infinite and pure therefore it has to reject all things finite and impure which all things are finite and impure well all things so awareness tells you to not to be attached to or obsessed with anything awareness cannot select anything awareness can only reject because the selection has been made the selection has been made long back awareness has selected right in the beginning who has been selected awareness has selected itself 
therefore there is no possibility of positive selection anymore because the one who had to be selected has already been selected the selector is the selection now what is left for awareness to do reject so whenever you would be devoted or wise enough to consult awareness she would say reject doesn't matter what your proposal is the answer is one reject and that is called indifference that is called udasinta or anasakti or virakti vairagya sanyas or that remember that awareness cannot select awareness would just reject and that makes it so easy for you doesn't matter what the question is the answer is one so you need no preparation now you know how i am able to answer your questions doesn't matter what you say i just have to reject it because you never come up with tea all you come up with is juice and water and i know that's what you would do whenever you would come to me with tea i would have no option but to select but you won't do that as long as you are you you would have no respect for warmth you will always come up with something cold and that would definitely be rejected this thing about indifference nirpekshata aur udasinta has been the bane of all spiritual seeking people have just not understood what it means you can be indifferent only to the little you cannot be indifferent to the immensity that you yourself are when you are indifferent to the little then you are vigorously with the great the lovable in the name of indifference do not start ignoring dharm dharm involves strong affirmative action as well in dharm both the possibilities are there move forward move backward stay where you are move forward with great speed move forward slowly go left go right fly dive like an amphibian vehicle that flies as well a flying crocodile now what do you have all three dimensions covered water terrain and the sky so dharm gives you all the options the option of acting vigorously in life is very much available when you are on the path of dharm what is dharm parmeshwari t dharm is not morality dharm is not natikta when you have rejected all dualities then you have come to the default state and the default state is dharm ashtavakra gives it a beautiful name he just says dhi that's your default state dhi and your homework is to discover that particular sutra where he talks of dhi
I hope it's not getting complicated for you. I try to keep it as simple as possible. So you reject the world of morality and the world of morality is this. It is now rejected. The world of duality, the world of good versus bad that is rejected. And when it is rejected, then by implication you have selected the world of dharma. And this is dharma. A great attraction towards the truth. Devotion towards only the truth that is dharma. Now this has been selected. And selecting this <coughs> means selecting the world of great possibilities. How is selecting this the same as selecting infinite possibilities? We said dharma is devotion to truth. So when you select this, actually you are selecting slavery. Now you are a slave to the truth. truth. Right. Let's promote the slave a little. Let's now designate him the driver of truth's car. Now, does this driver have a personal destination to go to? What is the driver going to do? So, truth says go left. The driver? Truth says drive slowly. The driver? Truth says accelerate. The driver. Truth says fly. Ah, it's an amphibian vehicle. You must. Truth says take off. The driver. Truth says dive. The driver. All the possibilities are open because the slave has no compunctions. For the slave, nothing is prohibited except disobedience to the master. That is the only thing prohibited to a slave. All else can be done and must be done. If the master says, keep driving straight, 60 miles per hour, the slave will keep driving at 60 miles per hour. So dharma cannot be about a particular conduct. Please see this. When you choose the world of duality, then you confine yourself to either this or that. Either this or that. In dharma, this, that, both are possible. What? Only this and that are possible? No. Cat, bat, hat and rat are also possible. Nothing I said is impossible in dharma except disobedience, disobedience to the master. Therefore, those who proceed on the way, hmm? therefore, those who proceed on the way gain great liberation in terms of action. The action of the common man is very constrained action. Tremendous limits are imposed on him. Do this, do that. The man of dharm knows no such limits. He fights no holds barred. The rules of the world do not apply to him. He gives them no respect. For his respect is reserved only for the one. To him nothing is prohibited. Except we said disobedience. disobedience. He sees nobody else. His eyes are firmly set on the master. He knows nobody else. One truth, one master. I know nobody else. He doesn't even say my master is one of the best. He says there is only one master I know. No one but him. He will not put any qualifying or limiting conditions on the master on the center of his movement, on his very heart and soul. He says only one is known. Who are all the others? They may have been greats. I do not deny that. But pardon me, I do not know them. 
I know only the one and if that one tells me to do a somersault here is a somersault and lo the vehicle has somersaulted that a moral man cannot do how do you know a moral man his car won't somersault. Simple. That's why on the way, the greatest of adventures welcome you and equally the greatest of tragedies await you. The way is not a passage through the neighborhood orchard where only nice shady fruit trees are there. Little kids are playing. Some dry leaves are falling on the path and occasionally a cherry or an apple also drops down and it's also picturesque and romantic no that's not the way the way is a jungle in which there is no way make your way so all the possibilities are there you see in the orchard you are limited because the path, the pavement has already been set and decided in the jungle. All the possibilities are there. Run straight, climb up a tree, take a bath. Hmm? Great freedom. The way of morality is very neat. It is the way of the householder who gets up every day at 5 a.m. and takes a bath. That's the way of morality. Huh? Get up at the right time, take a bath and be called the ideal householder. Celebrate all the festivals, worship all the gurus, salute all the gods and goddesses and be called the ideal lady. That's not the way Parmeshwari. Is the opposite of that the way? Not even that either. Who said that you cannot get up at 5 a.m.? Who said that you cannot worship? Tea is not the opposite of water, or is it? Tea is what you need. Tea is not the opposite of anything. Please. Tea is not defined by water. When you say tea is the opposite of water, what is the center of definition? Water. You have taken water and now you are saying, I want something opposite to it. No. Tea is not the opposite of water. When you are looking at tea, then you are looking at yourself. Your thirst, your need defines tea. Spirituality, therefore, is not the opposite of morality. Spirituality is when you transcend morality. Morality is when you look at mores, the norms, the morals. Spirituality is when you look at yourself. You get the difference. Morality is when you have been told of this and that, either by others or by your senses. Morality is when you are giving yourself 
graciation you are saying i will do that which is acceptable to most people and that will bring me security and pleasure and respect spirituality is when you are giving yourself peace are you getting it hmm. will i be able to respond rightly if i am indifferent only if you are indifferent to all kinds of rubbish will you be able to respond rightly tell me will you be able to run if your right hand is tied to a pole parmeshwari okay let's do the opposite now now maybe you will be able to run let's tie your left hand to a pole how fast are you running now so morality is about tying your right hand to the pole in morality everything that you do is right so morality is about not tying the wrong hand to the pole but tying the right hand to the pole now tell me how is the flight how well how smoothly and how high are you flying spirituality is about liberating yourself totally from the pole the evil man has the wrong hand the bad hand and the left hand has been conventionally called as the bad hand no you can't do any good deeds with the left hand with the left hand you can't even shake hands if kids start using their left hand there are many mothers who would scold them how are you eating using your left hand so the bad man has his bad hand tied to the pole the good man the pious man has the right hand the good hand tied to the pole what does ashtavakra mean when he says be indifferent he means be totally free of the pole neither the right hand nor the left hand should be attached to the pole is practicing indifference and witnessing the same forget about indifference and witnessing parmeshwari you are the driver what do words like indifference and witnessing mean to the driver the driver should be attending to the master's call and in this attention lies indifference and in this attention lies witnessing if the beloved is near to you would you listen to the beloved or would you try to be indifferent to the world please what comes first so you are the driver just listen to the master don't try practicing indifference to the crowd around the car or would you rather do that the master is with you sitting next to you and you are saying i want to practice indifference to the world even if you want to practice indifference who has become the center of your 
concentration. If you say I am trying to practice indifference to the world, who has become the center of your mind? The world. That is not Dharma Parmeshwari. No. Follow the command. Do the right thing. There is a lot to be done. The car has to be driven. What do you mean by indifference? What do you mean by witnessing? Love is enough. When you love the truth, then you are obviously indifferent to the false. That is indifference. You cannot practice indifference. You can only love the truth. Indifference happens as a byproduct. You are not trying and practicing indifference. Indifference has just happened on its own. Why has indifference happened? Because you were attending exclusively to the master. And when you are attending exclusively to the master, how can anyone else come to your mind? That is indifference. The same applies to witnessing. A lot of things are there by the wayside. There are men, women, trees, vehicles, holdings. And the driver is just driving the car. Do all the happenings on the road mean anything to the driver? No. They don't mean anything to him. All that which holds a meaning is the command of the master. All else is to be seen, responded to and ignored. There are 40 people carrying out a procession and they are raising slogans. The driver sees all that. Those people are on the road. Does that procession or those slogans mean anything to the driver? No. To him, that crowd is just an obstacle to be dealt with. He weaves his way around the crowd. That's all that the crowd means to him. This is witnessing. I don't have anything to do with you. I'm a non-participant. Or would he stop the car and join the procession? Or would he stop the car and start beating up people for obstructing the road? No, he doesn't have anything to do with them. This is called witnessing. I am a non-participant because I am attending exclusively to my Lord and he has told me to speed up and I am rushing. There is a lot of work to be done. The one who is obeying the master would seldom be found lazing around. He is a busy bee. Lord is a Tough taskmaster. He doesn't leave you free. Look at the lives of those who devoted themselves. They were extremely busy people. Look at Asant Farid or Guru Nanak or Kabir Sahib. See how hard they worked through the span of their lives. Internally, they were always free. But their hands, body, the entire system was always occupied. Look at the life of Jesus. Look at the life of Krishna. Look at the life of Prophet Muhammad. Do you find them just relaxing on a beach? By the way, none of them visited. 
गोवा और एनी सच प्लेस ऑन फुट गुरु नानक देव मेड वेरी लॉन्ग जर्नीज वन टू द साउथ वन टू द ईस्ट वन टू डीप इन द वेस्ट and he was just traveling on foot ditto with vardhaman mahavir and siddharth gautam they were extremely busy people you wouldn't have been able to have them spare their time the lord i said is a tough task master so get this notion out of your head that indifference means that now you have nothing to do in this world indifference to the world means that now you are an activist now you are a missionary we said now you are a busy bee you'd work and work very hard and if you're not working hard then it means that you are not heeding the command 